Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we're going to be working practice questions that deal with the third tax asset as well as the third tax liability, a topic that's challenging for many students. Those practice questions are based on the previous session, which I introduce, I go over the third tax asset and the third tax liability from an introductory perspective. LinkedIn is where you would need to connect with me if you haven't done so. YouTube is where I house my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance lectures. This is all the courses that I cover. So in this session, we're looking at something in intermediate accounting as well as technically CPA questions. On my website, you can find additional resources, questions, sim quasi practice simulation, notes, PowerPoint slides, as well as many, many more resources for you to succeed as an accounting or as a CPA student. Let's go ahead and start with the first sets of questions. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is a list of true false to make sure you understand the most basic concept. So the first question is this true or false. What I want you to do, I want you to pause before each question, try to answer it, then listen to my recording and see if you got it right. Let's look at the first true false. A temporary difference is the difference between the tax basis of an asset or a liability and its reported amount in the financial statement that would result in a taxable amount or a deductible amount in the future, in future years. Is this a correct statement? Yes or no? And the answer is yes, this is a true statement. This is exactly what a temporary difference is. It's a temporary difference because of the tax basis of an asset and a liability and it would result in a future taxable amount. Taxable amount means it, it might result in a deferred tax liability or a deductible amount, it might result in a deferred taxed asset. So a temporary difference will get you either a deferred taxed asset or a deferred taxed liability, depending on what that difference is. Second question. When the book amount of an asset or a liability differs from the tax basis as a result of a temporary difference, basically what we're saying same thing here. The future tax effect on taxable income must be reported solely in future financial statement that the difference effect. Hold on a second. So first we gave the basically the definition of a temporary difference. Then we said the future tax effect must be reported solely in future financial statement. No, not at all. It has to be reported now. The temporary difference has to be reported now as either a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. So this statement is false. This statement is false. Okay, so it, it's reported in future financial statement, not in current finance. Uh, I'm sorry, in current, not in future. A deferred tax liability is the amount of deferred tax consequences attributable to an existing temporary difference that would result in net taxable amount in future years. Is this what a, uh, a deferred tax liability is? Yes, a deferred tax liability would result in more taxes in future years. So that's a true statement. That's, that's the definition of a li the deferred tax liability. A deferred tax expense is the decrease in a deferred tax liability balance from the beginning to the end of the accounting period. Now, you read the statement. You are really stuck. I really don't know the answer. Okay. Let's look at it from a, from a journal entry perspective to see if this makes sense. And there is an important concept here. A deferred tax expense. So a deferred tax e expense. Remember, what do we do with expenses? We debit expenses. So no, notice this is a deferred tax expense. We debit expenses. Is the decrease in deferred tax liability? Hold on a second. If you have a liability, and that liability decrease, I also have to debit the liability. So what you're saying, I, I debit the third tax expense, then I debit the third tax liability? That doesn't make any sense. Well, if I'm debiting the third tax expense, if the third tax expense debiting, if I'm, if I am connecting this to the third tax liability, the third tax liability must be increasing. Right, because to, to increase a liability, you credit a liability. To increase an expense, you credit an expense. You credit an expense, okay? Therefore, a deferred tax expense, so what does that mean? This is, there's an important concept here. It means every time deferred tax liability goes up from year to year, your deferred 
tax expense goes up. And as a result, your income tax expense goes up because the third tax expense is part of your income tax expense because your income tax expense, part of it is current, part of it is the third. If the third goes up, uh, your income tax expense goes up. Now, also, we can say if a deferred tax liability decrease, write these down, deferred tax expense goes down. It means, it means if I'm debiting deferred tax liability, the corresponding credit is deferred tax expense, which is part of income tax expense. I am crediting deferred tax expense. I am crediting deferred tax expense. And using the same logic, let me, since we are going there, using the same logic, every time deferred tax asset goes up, okay, the expense, the corresponding expense must go down. And every time a deferred taxed asset goes down, it means the change is a decrease, your uh, deferred, uh, your income tax expense goes up. So make sure you jot these down. So those are very important, very, very helpful shortcuts. Let's take a look at this question. The concept of a deferred tax liability meets the definition of a liability established according to GAAP because it's a result of a past transaction present obligation, future sacrifice, pre represent the future sacrifice. That's exactly what the liability is, and the third tax liability is no different. It means this is a correct statement. An objective of accounting for income taxes is to recognize the third tax liabilities and assets for future tax consequences of event that already been recognized in the financial statement. Hold on a second. Is this the reason of, is this the objective of in accounting for income taxes? And the answer is yes. So the third tax asset and the third tax liability tells you what's going to happen in the future that already happened in the financial statement. That's basically what it is. So the, the, it is, is correct. The third tax asset represent the increase in taxes payable in future years as a result of a taxable temporary difference existing at the end of the current year. So, so let's, let, let's see if is this a correct or incorrect statement. So they're asking us about a deferred taxed asset. Deferred taxed asset. Does it represent an increase in taxes payable? No. A deferred taxed asset, what does it represent? It represents a future savings or, a, or, or an increase in refund, not an increase in taxes payable in future years. That would have been a deferred taxed liability. Uh, Ability would represent an increase in taxes payable, not the third taxed asset. The third taxed asset would represent future savings. Let's work a few more of these true false. Um, a deferred taxed asset should not be recognized in the accounts because they they fail to meet the definition of an asset. No, a deferred taxed asset is an asset. It's a future benefit. It's a future benefit. A deferred tax asset should be reduced by evaluation allowance if based on the available evidence, it's more likely than not that some portion or all of the deferred tax asset will not be realized. So this is a valuation question. Is this a true statement? And the answer is yes. This is a true statement. What, what happened is this. If we have a deferred tax asset, we have to look at available evidence, whether it's negative or positive, to determine if we should have an allowance account. And I talked about the allowance account. Basically, if you are not going to be using the, the deferred taxed asset, you need to write it down. All positive and negative information should be considered in determining whether evaluation allowance is needed. Yes, I just said this. You have to consider positive and negative. Positive means stuff that's going to affect it positively and negative stuff that's going to affect it negatively. Basically, we have to look if we are going to lose or have more, um, if we're going to, if we're going to more, more likely or less likely to use those tax savings in the future. If we are not going to use them, we need to write down that deferred tax asset. We should not have an asset that we are not going to use, which is considered a useless asset. Let's take a look at this multiple choice. With regard to deferred taxes, the use of the installment method for tax purpose will typically result in what? Okay. So what they're saying here is this. If we use the installment sales method. Now, if you don't know what the installment sales method is right there, you are in a trouble. You're in trouble. What is the installment sales method? The installment sales method is when, when you sell something. 
let me go back here when you sell something and they're going to be making payments in future years so each x represent a payment and if we are using this method for tax purposes it means every time we receive the cash from those payments we have to pay taxes now versus maybe for financial accounting purposes what we did is for financial accounting purposes we recognize the whole revenue up front so for financial accounting purposes we recognize the whole revenue up front for tax purposes this is what we're using here we are waiting for the payment what is that going to give us that would result is it would it result in a deferred tax asset and would that result in a deferred tax liability think about it for a moment and let me know okay hopefully you got it what's going to happen in the future is i receive my payment whatever that payment is i have to pay taxes every time i receive the payment in the future i have to pay taxes i have a future taxes what do i have i have a deferred tax liability i don't have a deferred tax asset so one is out a is out c is out b is the answer i have a deferred tax liability Let's take a look at this question. The reporting of which of the following would typically result in a deferred tax liability? So we have two, warranty expense and bad debt expense. And which one of them would result in a deferred tax liability? Let's look at each one of them separately. Now here you have to kind of use your knowledge to know how this all work, okay? So what happened when we report warranty expense? Okay, so from a financial accounting perspective, here's what happens. So from a financial, this is the financial statement and this is tax. What happened when we report a warranty expense, we debit, we debit, war, sorry, we debit warranty expense, let's say $10,000, we credit estimated warranty liability 10,000 what did we do for financial accounting purposes we don't do anything we don't do anything for, sorry for tax purposes for that year this is 2020 we don't do anything okay now what happened in 2021 in 2021 we are expecting for that warranty expense to materialize we are expecting for warranty expense to have occurred and once it occurred we'll take a deduction hold on a second so a warranty expense gives us a future deduction because in 2021 so 2021 when actually for tax purposes when i actually pay for the warranty i debit an expense and I credit cash when I pay for the warranty for tax purposes. For financial accounting purposes, I already accounted for that. So it's going to give me a future deductible amount. Hold on a second. Future deductible amount is not a liability. Future deductible amount gives me a deferred tax asset. Therefore, one is out, A is out, C is out. Now the question becomes two, bad debt expense. Follow the same logic. Bad debt expense, we, we book bad debt expense for financial accounting purposes, but we don't do anything for taxes why because we only take the write-off when it's the direct method under taxes when we actually write off the account therefore the same concept we we book bad debt expense for financial accounting purposes we debit bad debt expense and we credit allowance and for tax purposes we don't do anything then in future years when we actually write off the amount for tax purposes this is when we take the expense therefore bad debt expense on the financial statement now will give us a future to future deductible amount in the future where therefore it doesn't result in a tax liability therefore b is out and the answer is neither one nor two okay both of them are deferred tax asset let's take a look at this question station toy train company a cash basis taxpayer prepares its accrual financial statement in year 2013 balance sheet station deferred income tax liability increased so deferred tax liability went up Okay, hold on a second before we even proceed. If a liability went up, liability takes a credit. The corresponding to the liability should be an expense. So the expense will go up just before we even proceed any further. Okay. Which of the following changes during 2013 would have caused this increase in the third income tax liability? Hold on a second now. So they're asking us why we would have an increase in the third tax liability actually. Okay. Well, let's think about it for a moment. 
deferred tax liability went up, it means a deferred tax expense went up. A deferred tax expense went up. It means deferred tax expense is part of income tax expense, but we have to be specific. Deferred tax expense went up. So the third tax liability went up, the third tax expense went up. Which of these one, two, or three would 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 result in this? Okay, let's take a look at one at a time. An increase in prepaid. Hold on a second. Let's see. Go back to your basic journal entries. You're looking at your financial statements and you acquire a prepaid. What would you do for your financial statements? For my financial statements, I debit my prepaid. Let's just make it um, 3000 And I credit cash, 3000 Prepaid, PP is an asset. Prepaid is an asset. Oops, sorry. Prepaid is an asset. Now, what do I do for tax purposes? Well, you need to know this. For tax purposes, I am going to expense $3,000 and credit cash $3,000. Okay, this is for tax purposes. You expense your prepaid. You cannot hold them as an asset, generally speaking. That's the general rule, an increase in prepaid. Well, hold on a second. If I took the expense now, I took the expense now, 2020, in year 2020, what's going to happen is this. In future years, in future years, what's going to happen in future years for financial statements, so now, look, now let's take a look at the future, what happened. In future years, I'm going to have an expense on the financial statement, and on the taxes, I'm going to have no expenses because I took my ex all my expenses. Therefore, yes, an increase in prepaid. If I acquire a prepaid, in the future, I'm going to have a more deferred tax liability because I already took my expense. Therefore, one is in. If one is in, I can take out A. I can take out D. Immediately, this is how you should be thinking on the exam. Because if one is in and you're positive about this, or what we have to do is determine if two, that's the, you, don't, you, you, don't, you know three is out because there's no one, two, and three. The, the, hopefully you see this. Now you just have to know if this is correct, if this is if this result in a deferred tax liability or not. An increase in rent receivable. An increase in rent receivable. Let's take a look at it from a financial accounting perspective. From a financial accounting perspective, an increase in rent receivable, it means we debit rent receivable. And what do we credit? We credit revenue. We credit revenue. So we counted the revenue for financial accounting purposes. For tax purposes, nothing. We don't do anything. No entry. Why? Because we're waiting to receive the money. Once we receive the money, we, we count the revenue for the rent. Therefore, for this year, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say for 2020, for year 2020, I have no revenue for tax purposes. That's, that's good for now, for tax purposes. But guess what? In 2021 and 2022, I'm going to be receiving this money. Hold on a second. What happened when I receive this money? I have more taxes. What happened if I have more taxes? I have more deferred tax liability to book. Therefore, two would also result in a deferred tax liability. Two would result in a deferred tax liability. Therefore, the answer is C. The answer is C. C as in Charlie. Which is, uh, which is correct regarding current and deferred income taxes? So basically, they're asking us, you know, do you know what current and deferred income taxes are? Because current and deferred compose your income tax expense. Deferred income tax expense is equal to the change in deferred tax liability or asset on the balance sheet from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. Is this a correct statement? Yes, this is what deferred income tax is. It's the change in your deferred tax asset and your deferred tax liability. So one is in. If one is in, I can take out B and I take, take out D. Now you're down to 50-50. Let's take a look, see if the second statement is correct. Current income tax expense, do you know what current income tax expense? Equal to the income taxes payable on the corporate tax return, assuming no estimated payment were made. Is this your current income tax expense? Yes, this is what I explained to you earlier. Your current tax, Income tax expense is what you have to pay to the IRS as your income tax is payable. Both of these statements are correct. Therefore, the answer is C. Remember, those two, the deferred income tax expense and the current ta income tax expense together will give you income tax expense. And we talked about this, okay? But those are the definition of them. Make sure you know what they are. Make sure you know the definition, know what they look like, how do they fit together. Okay, let's take a look at this question. The Laney Company had revenues of 180000 for book purposes and 150000 for tax purposes. 
Let's take a look at the question. If Delaney has a 35% tax rate, what's Delaney income taxes payable for 2017? What are they asking you? They're asking you how much, what's the check that they should write to the IRS, Inc., which is, cur which is I can call it, what's the check they, that they have to write? I can call it current income tax expense, whatever you want to call it, but make sure you know it. So basically, they're asking you for the current income tax expense, okay, or income taxes payable. So they have revenue of 180, so for book, I don't care about the book purposes. They have revenues of 150 for tax purposes. So revenues 150. Delaney also has expenses of 100,000 for both. So the expenses for tax purposes also 100,000. This is for tax purposes. Therefore, my taxable income is 50,000. Therefore, if I take 50,000 multiplied by 35%, I should have 17,500. Okay, if I want to journalize this, let's journalize it. You will debit current income tax expense 17,500 income taxes payable 17,500 so this is the current component the current component of your taxes well since we do the current component let's do the deferred component what the heck you know it's you know let's do it so what is the deferred component well guess what um you have more taxes now. You paid more taxes now. For financial accounting purposes, you're going to have 50,000 less of taxes. You're going to have 50,000. 50,000 means what? Why 50,000? Because remember, from a financial accounting perspective, your revenue is only... Oh, actually, your revenue for book purposes is higher. Sorry. From a financial accounting perspective, your revenue is 180. Actually, more. Your revenue is more. And your expenses are 100,000. So you, it's 80,000. So notice, so for, from a financial accounting perspective, you have more revenue. It means in the future, you're going to have, in the future, you're going to have 30,000 more in revenue in the future. So in the future, you have more revenue. In the future, you have more revenues, 30,000 more revenues. Well, if you have more revenues in the future, you have more taxes to pay. We're going to assume the future rate is 35%. Let's do this. I believe it's 10,500, but let's... Uh, so I'm just going to show you how can they trick you. I mean, 30,000, you have to know what they're asking you. Times 0.35, that's 10,500. The 10,500, the 10,500 is the deferred component of your taxes. Therefore, the entry will be deferred income tax, uh, 10,000. 500 deferred taxed liability 10,500 now can I combine so basically let me just tell you simply put if you want to combine those two basically this and this those two this is this is the current and this is the deferred taxes now I can combine those two I can put income my income tax expense is Sorry, my income tax expense is twenty seven, twenty eight thousand. Then I my deferred tax liability ten thousand five hundred, and my and my income tax is payable ten thousand five hundred credit. Okay, sorry. So this is the combined entry. Hopefully, this, I mean, you have to read. In other words, for this question, they can ask you for what's the deferred component. The deferred component is 10500 They could have also asked you what is the total income tax expense. It would have been 28000 28, So you have to understand. They could ask you all three questions here. So they ask you about the... The taxes now, the, the taxes now is 17,500. The deferred is 10,500. Together is 28,000. If you understand this question, you have a good, a good, good understanding of things. Let's take a look at this question. Maureen Corporation reports income taxes before, income taxes, uh, before taxes of 500,000, aka gap, in its income statement. But because of timing difference, taxable income is only 200000 So for financial statement, they have a half a million. 
for tax purposes their taxable income is only 200,000 now why there's a difference of 300,000 why is there that difference it could be that we took more deduction for taxes or we took more revenues for financial statement either we took more deduction for tax purposes therefore our taxable income 200,000 or we we recognize more revenues for financial for financial statement okay it's either e either or okay if the tax rate is 45% what's the net income should the corporation report so here what they're asking us really is the net income what's net income that should the corporation so we're looking at financial statement perspective how can you solve a problem like this well you have your income before taxes so you, you're looking for your taxes okay what are your taxes your taxes are composed of two of two things the current and the deferred component so your income taxes are current taxes and the deferred component well can I compute my current yes I can easily compute my current I have my income taxes I multiply this by 45% and that's gonna give me 90,000 so my current taxes is $90,000 this is the current component what is the deferred component well let's see the difference between my financial statement taxable income or financial statement uh, income before taxes and taxable income is 300,000 what does that mean it means in the future in the future I am going to lose I am going to lose a deduction or have more revenues of 300,000 regardless in the future I have more liability in the future I have more liabilities in the future in terms of deferred tax liability okay so I'm gonna have to have more liability because 300,000 it's gonna either it's gonna increase my taxes or it's a reduction that I'm not going to have a deduction I'm not going to have well it means that the third component is an increase in the fair taxed liability it's 300,000 multiplied by 0.45 so 45 plus 45 equal to 90 plus 45 equal to 135 so the deferred tax liability is an increase of 135 well guess what so my taxes are 0, 0, 0, 0.005 to 225 so my income tax expense is 225 let me also give you the journal entry for this so this way you know what the journal entry as well so the journal entry will be I'm just gonna call it income tax expense income tax expense 225 okay um, deferred tax liability which will be a credit of 135 this is the credit and income taxes payable which also a credit of 90,000 90,000 so the debit is 225 and those are the two credits so so my income taxes my income tax expense is 225 so 220 500,000 minus my taxes will give me a net income of 275 in the answer is 275 notice 225 is here but that's not what they're asking you they're not asking you about your income tax expense also notice the 90,000 is here the 90,000 is your current income tax expense which is your this is the check that you write to the IRS they could ask you again in this question they could have asked you about many many component many component just be careful what they what they ask you just be careful what they're asking you okay according to gap a deferred tax liability is what result of a past transaction yes it's a result of a past transaction therefore D is out is a present obligation is it a present obligation yes it is so a is out it is present obligation so it's present obligation it re represent the future sacrifice of course it's a liability so the answer is C C so this is basically the definition of a liability a deferred tax liability is a liability so that's basically you have to understand this it should fit the definition of a liability any way you frame it any way you frame it Glime Inc has a deductible temporary difference of a hundred thousand at the end of the first year of operation 
Its tax here is 40%. Income taxes payable are 90,000, which is th those are the current taxes. Klein properly recorded the deferred taxed asset. Later, after careful review of all available evidence, it's determined that it's more likely than not that 15,000 of the deferred tax asset will not be realized. What entry should they make to reduce the asset value? So simply put, how do you, how do you report a, an allowance for deferred taxes? You debit income tax expense? Yes. Do you credit the deferred tax asset? No, you don't credit the deferred tax asset itself. You reduce the deferred tax asset, but not by crediting the deferred tax asset. So that's incorrect. Income taxes payable debit? No, no, no. You don't reduce your taxes for the IRS. That's out. And you don't reduce your taxes neither, income tax expense. You debit allowance to reduce the deferred asset to expected realizable value? Well, allowance is a contra asset. Contra asset is not increased by a debit, therefore it sees out. Well, by process of elimination, D is the answer. You credit allowance to reduce deferred income ta taxes, which is an allowance account, which makes sense, and you increase your income tax expense because you lost that savings. So D is the... So if you have any questions about these questions, by all means, email me. In the next session, we would look at, fer at an ad additional topics that deals with deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability to start to expand our horizon because this was an introductory questions. I strongly suggest you subscribe to my website as it's an investment in your career, especially if you are an intermediate accounting student or a CPA candidate as it will, as it will help you in both situations. Good luck and study hard.